What I want to do today is a video talking about your audio reinforcement behind your speakers, everything behind your speakers, and I want to talk about maybe some of the components that I feel like would help you create a really nice little audio system for mobile DJs. I'm not talking nightclub, I'm not talking concerts, I'm talking mobile DJs, the wedding guys, the guys who do the kind of stuff I do. But before I do that, I feel like I need to file some disclaimers about this video and my past few videos about speakers. If you saw them, I gave some opinions about speakers. I tried to give a demonstration that I thought was pretty straightforward, but I guess not. Some people just didn't get it. So first of all, all of that stuff that I talked about, please understand that these are my observations and my opinions. I am not an expert. I'm an end user meaning I'm just a guy who needs stuff to do what I do. And I'm not somebody who I would consider to be an audiophile, meaning someone who's like way into audio and understands a, a lot about audio. I don't. I just know what I feel like sounds decent and what doesn't. And I gave some opinions. And some of my opinions were unpopular with some of you, and that's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. We're, we're allowed to have different opinions. My word is not the final word in this. There are other people out there who know far more about this than I do. And even if you don't know a lot about this, you might have a different opinion, and that's cool. So understand that bit. Uh, also, uh, in regards to maybe the first video I did where I used the megaphone and compared it to an RCF uh, Art Series 312A, and a lot of people got upset with me and said, well, that's not a fair comparison, Brian. What you need to do is you need to go out and buy a speaker for $150 and compare it to the RCF. Well, think about that for a minute. Why would I waste my money, $150 or whatever, on a, a crap speaker? And here's the other thing that you need to consider. To truly demonstrate audio and the differences between sounds you really need to be in front of the speaker. And what am I talking about? Well, here, look, the videos that you see, and you've heard my RCFs in the videos, but you haven't really heard my RCFs. Because, first of all, I'm recording it on this JVC camera. It's going through the microphone, and then it's uh, this video and audio is getting turned into an MOV file. Then I put it on my computer, run it through Pinnacle Studio 12, and it gets transferred into an MPEG-4, and then I upload it on YouTube, and it gets transferred into whatever file format YouTube uses. And then you listen to it, and you watch and listen to the video either in, like, what is it, 240p or 720. And then who knows what your computer speakers sound like, and what type of audio system you're listening to my video on. It's not a true representation. So, for that reason, I use this extreme example, because I felt like, no matter how you're listening to my video, you're going to be able to hear the difference between this poor quality here and good quality or decent quality, what I would consider decent quality, with, with the power speaker I had. So that's why I did it that way, guys. If you're going to go out and buy speakers, you need to listen to them. You need to go out and listen to them. And I understand that a lot of you are looking at the RCFs now because I'm talking about them. The 312s are sold out all over the place. Nobody has them. You can't even buy them. They've become so popular. Uh, and I guess that's why I'm out here trying to just tell you that, yeah, they are fantastic speakers. Ask around. It, don't just take my word for it. If you cannot go to a showroom and hear these things, uh, I'm just telling you, they're nice. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, it depends on what my word means to you. Which brings me to my next little thing I want to talk about, is that a lot of people have done this to me lately, They and they do it on a lot of products. They'll email me and they'll say, or they'll put a message on, on the video and they'll say, Hey, Brian, look, I was considering buying Brand X that you had talked about. You said you really liked it in the video, but what do you really think of it? Guys, please understand something. I am telling you in the videos what I really think of it. And I have to. Now, there are people on YouTube who do things differently than I do. And I'm not calling anyone out, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. But my opinions and my demonstrations on products are not financially motivated. 
I don't care what you buy. I'm trying to help you, and I'm trying to steer you in, in what I believe to be a good direction. And I'm not going to tell you something is cool when it's not. I'm not going to tell you something is the thing to do when I don't feel it is. And it's just my opinion. I feel like the only thing I have is my word. And the minute that my word becomes a financially motivated word, then my word doesn't mean anything, and it should not mean anything to you. And the last thing I want to talk about before we can actually get into the video is, no, what I consider to be a quality audio system will not make you a better DJ. And if you have an audio system that I think is garbage, it doesn't make you a bad DJ. This is all a matter of taste and opinion. And I have mine, you have yours, you have your budgets, and you have things that you want right now. Maybe you want instant gratification. You don't want to save up and get something a little better. You want to go ahead and get the cheapest thing that you can find. Go ahead. I, I don't care. And it's not going to make you a bad DJ to do this. I just feel like there are real benefits and value to making an educated choice when buying gear. And the stuff that I'm showing you, again, is stuff that I think is nice. And I've got some standards on this. It's just just who I am I guess I take some pride in what I do and I feel like that the product that I deliver to my customers is a quality product in every way I feel like I'm a decent DJ I feel like my stuff's decent so that's it let's go ahead and talk about some stuff to put behind your speakers to make what I would consider to be a nice audio system there was some talk in the comment sections of my last couple of videos that said look you can make any speaker sound decent if you play with the EQ a little bit and I'm not agreeing with that for a couple of different reasons here this is what I think they're talking about most of us are using this like a three band EQ right on our line channel we've got bass mid and treble this is gain don't pay attention to that today I think what they're suggesting is is that let's say you cut out the mid bring it down to maybe I don't know what are we at nine o'clock maybe bring the treble up a little bit you can make it sound a little brighter and take some of that nasty sound away by getting rid of some of that mid-range. Well, although, yeah, you can, what happens is, yeah, you're getting rid of the nasty sound, but you're getting rid of sounds that you wanted to keep, too. So I don't think that's a great idea. Yeah, you can have graphic EQs and try to do all kinds of crazy stuff, but you know what? Just go out and get good speakers and be done with it. Look, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about is when you're buying speakers, you're going to be listening to them through something. It's probably some kind of mixing board at the gear store. I know it's hard to see here, but right now my EQ is flat, meaning it's running straight up and down. It's at 12 o'clock on every single band. Bass, mid, and treble. When you're listening to your speakers, listen to them here. If they sound good with a flat EQ, I bet you they're a real nice speaker. I'm gonna work our way backwards in this simple little quality audio system I'm talking about today no EQs, processors, anything like that. We're just talking about the bare basics. Now on the back of your powered speakers you may see a couple of different styles of inputs. You may see RCA or you may see quarter which is the quarter inch stuff is what's on the end of your headphones that plug into your mixer but chances are you're going to see these. This is XLR cable or some people call it Canon or microphone cable but it's audio cable is what it is this is going to deliver a balanced signal from your mixing board to your speakers. Now I used to think it didn't make a difference whether you used balanced or unbalanced so I ran RCA's out of my mixer and I had the special cable that was RCA on one end and then it was quarter inch on the other and just stuck that into my amplifier which is basically what's on the back of your powered speakers and then I switched over to balanced XLR cable it delivered a much cleaner signal and I could hear it and why not deliver the cleanest signal possible to your speakers no hum and yeah it's good stuff good delivery and, and why not do all you can to create the best audio possible when it comes to buying this stuff you can get several different grades of XLR cable this is the cheap stuff it's probably about fourteen dollars for I don't know fifteen twenty feet and you can buy stuff that's over a hundred bucks a cable and I don't know if it really makes a difference what you buy. 
I have this stuff laying around, but the cable I've got running from my mixing board to my RCFs, I think I paid about 30, 35 bucks a cable for. And the reason I did was because on this cheap stuff, these ends aren't very good, and sometimes you'll get shorts in them. So when you buy the, if you're going to buy the cheap stuff, buy extra. But go ahead and spend a couple bucks, especially that main cable that goes from your your mixer to your your speakers, just to get quality ends, so you don't get these shorts. So now we're going to need a mixing board with balanced outputs. Here is an American Audio DMS4 digital workstation. And if you look at the back of it. It has balanced outputs. So what mixer to buy? Well, there are a lot of choices out there. First of all, I'd say stay away from the off brands and even the budget lines or budget brands like Behringer. Sure, they have all the bells and whistles and they probably have balanced outputs on a lot of them. But they've made compromises somewhere to get to that price point. Unfortunately, it's in the quality of audio they produce you're going to see a big difference between, let's say, a Behringer and a Denon. American Audio makes some really nice mixers. Anything American Audio makes with balanced outputs is a safe bet. Everything Denon makes has balanced outputs. Now, there are the quarter-inch outputs on the X100 and X120. Those are still balanced, but you need, you're going to need to get a special cable that's quarter-inch on one side and our, our XLR mail on the other side to make the connection from your mixer to your speaker. But they are balanced, they just look a little different. Pioneer, I think everything they make is balanced except for the DJM 400 that has RCA outs. You can get Rain, you can get Allen and Heath and go way up the line and get some real nice stuff, but you don't have to spend tons of money. Just get something quality, get a brand that you trust and get something with those balanced outputs. Where you go from here can vary. It's all kind of a matter of preference. Some people will go into some kind of tabletop CD player or a rack mountable CD player and they'll play anything from audio CDs to MP3 CDs or even MP3 DVDs. Or sometimes these decks are actually media card readers too. You can pop in a flash drive or an SD card and you can play those files right off of the CD player. Some people will go into some kind of MIDI controller and then go into a computer, or some people will just do a sound card into a computer, all of which I think are acceptable. And there's nothing wrong with any of them, it's just kind of a matter of personal preference, whatever you like. But I will say this, most of us are using MP3s, and if you're going to use MP3s, the least you can do is use an MP3 that's a 320 bit rate. A lot of people say it doesn't matter, ah, you can use a 192, whatever you want, Man, I'm telling you, if you take a song and you rip it at 192 and then you rip it out at 320 and play them back to back, you're going to see a difference. It's all about producing the best possible sound, and you're not going to get the best possible sound out of a low bitrate MP3. Now, some people will go wave, and I don't know, that's probably all right. It's probably great, actually. But again, most of us are using MP3, so the least you can do is use the highest bitrate possible. And stay away from some of those download sites that are for consumers. I'm thinking iTunes pops into my head. You're not going to get great quality audio from iTunes. And the reason you're not is because it's designed for an iPod, which has little earbuds that go into your ear, and that's all you're really supposed to do with it. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to really gank a bunch of music from iTunes and use it to broadcast. And that brings me to iPods. Please don't use iPods, guys. It makes us look so unprofessional. And you're not going to get a great audio signal out of an iPod. Again, it's designed for these little earbuds. Not for broadcasting out of speakers, at a club, or at a mobile DJ uh, event. Don't do it. It makes us look unprofessional. I've seen DJs have a laptop and an iPod. And they'll have Windows Media Player on the laptop, and then they'll have the iPod on maybe channel 2 and they'll just crossfade back and forth and what happens is your customers are going to come up and look at you for one and say gee I have all this stuff at home what am I paying this guy for I can just go out and buy this stuff and do it myself I know I've mentioned it before but it's worth mentioning again and, and again you're just not going to get good sound quality get a good computer program get something you like there are a lot of them available out there something that's DJ specific that's not 
iTunes DJ, get something that's like a real DJ program that, that your customers haven't seen before. It's pro looking and it does what it's supposed to do for DJs and play those good quality audio files off of those. I'm telling you, do yourself a favor. If you think 192 is good enough, like I said, take that 192 file and then take the same song as a 320 file and play them back to back. Do yourself that favor. You're going to get the best audio possible. I mean, you might as well, right? If you're going to do it, do it right. So that's it for this video. Comments, please put them down here. I know this was a long one and I didn't show a lot of stuff in this video, a lot of props and things, but I hope I got my point across and we'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.